I introduced to you uh, Deacon Ben Blackbear, who is a deacon here at the parish. He's actually celebrating a significant anniversary tomorrow. What is it? 50? 40? 40 years of the deacon. How about that? Rushing back to give his talk and had a flat tire and didn't have the right tool. You know how it is. <laughs> All right, so here he is. <laughs> Thank you, Father. <clears throat> um, welcome to uh, St. Francis Parish and St. Charles uh, Catholic Church here in St. Francis. We're very proud of this church. It was built in 1916. And uh, <clears throat> we uh, went to church here. I went to church here throughout the school, you know, the time that I went to school here at St. Francis Mission. It was a Catholic boarding school run by Jesuit uh, fathers and Franciscan sisters. So I went to school here for 12 years. And uh, we had mass in here every morning during the school year. So we're very proud of the church. Um, I guess I just wanted to make some quick remarks about the history of, our, of the Catholic Church among the Lakota, the Sioux people here in Rosebud. And um, I guess, in a sense, it also covers a little bit about the Pine Ridge Reservation, the Standing Rock, the Lower, Lower Brule, the uh, um, Cheyenne River Reservations. The five reservations on, on east of the Missouri River are all Sioux tribes. We're called the Teton Sioux. And um, we lived before before we um, came into contact with the uh, non-Indians from the east, uh, we lived here west of the Missouri River in western South Dakota, Nebraska, uh, Wyoming, and then portions of Montana. And um, we lived uh, just roaming the plains uh, our economy was hunting and fishing economy. And we built our society and culture around that economy, the hunting and fishing economy. And we based our spirituality on nature. Since we lived out in the open in nature, we based our spirituality on nature. So basically that was how we lived when we came, first came into contact with uh, some missionaries who came among us. One of the first ones was Father Pierre de Smith. He came among the Lakota here in the uh, West River area. And almost, almost one of the very few white people that came across the Missouri River at the time. So he met some of the Sioux, some of the Lakota on the Missouri River. He was actually going east to Washington State, to Idaho. But on the way there, he stopped here. And then he preached to some of the Sioux uh, bands or groups. And so some of them heard the gospel at that time. And I think he even baptized some people at that time. Uh, part of my family story is one of my great grandfathers was, bat was baptized by Pierre de Smith. So that was our first encounter with Christianity. And that just began the, uh, the sort of journey towards um, uh, accepting um, Christianity and the Catholic faith. Um, after Father De Smith, there were some other Catholic missionaries that came among the Lakota. And uh, the first people who actually were converted were the D-speaking Sioux tribes who were east of the Missouri River. They lived in Minnesota, the 
Dakota, D-speaking uh, Sioux tribes. So they had a lot of, uh, they were the first ones to encounter the non-Indians, and then they had missionaries come among them, and they were converted. And there's a story that um, I just read recently that was kind of interesting. <clears throat> In uh, <clears throat> 1862, the Dakota, the Sioux tribes in the east, the D-speaking people, had an uprising. They had taken all their lands and, you know, they were uh, living on rations and they were starving. And so pretty soon they had an uprising. And they got into a fight with the non-Indians in, in Minnesota. And then finally, they were all chased this way, you know, either up north or into Canada or some were chased back this way and they captured 200 of the warriors and they were going to be, um, they, tr they were tried and they were going to be hanged. And here President Abraham, Abraham Lincoln commuted most of the sentences except 38 of them. 38 of the Sioux chiefs warriors were going to be hanged. So instead of 200 they narrowed it to 38. So they were hanged in Fort Snelling in um, in the Twin Cities. And there's a story that um, of the 38 Dakota, D-speaking warriors that were going to be hanged, the last night or a couple nights before they were hanged, they told them, they said, you know, to get ready to die, you can, you know, get, um, have some ministers come to you or you can use your traditional prayers to get ready for death. And here, um, two of them relied on their own traditional um, faith on nature. Two of them asked for some Presbyterian ministers to come and minister to them. And those Presbyterian ministers spoke Lakota, the D Dakota language. So they came and ministered to them. And the other 34 prisoners asked for a black robe, a Catholic priest. So they went looking for one and they found Father, his name was Father Raveau. I think he was a Jesuit if I'm not mistaken. So they found him and they brought him and those 34 um, warriors, you know, wanted to be instructed in the Catholic faith. So they, he instructed them, you know, in the fundamentals, basically, of the Catholic faith, and then they wanted to be baptized. And then, so they were all prepared. So those 34 went to bed. Next day, they were going to be hanged. And they slept soundly. Next morning, they went to the gallows, almost joyfully. You know, they didn't, uh, they weren't uh, afraid to die. And this is recorded stuff. It's, if you read uh, Father Revo's uh, memoirs, you'll read it in there. Um, and then they must have got to their relatives. Because after that, a lot of the Lakota, Dakota, the D speaking people, they wanted black robes to come to them and preach to them so that they could, they could become Catholics. And so this was around 18, what is it, 1862, 1863, somewhere around there that this happened. And then, like I said, during that time in the, in the, in the West River, the Lakota, these, the L speaking people over here were having um, very few missionaries coming over and talking to them. But every time they heard of a black robe coming, you know, right away they would crowd over there and bring him in to teach them about the Catholic faith, Christian faith. And those were the beginnings. So eventually, when they were, we were settled on the reservations, 
even though they allocated each reservation to a particular denomination, and Rosebud was, was given to the Episcopalians, Chief Spotted Tail and some of the leaders, Iron Shell and the chiefs from around this community, you know, they asked for black robes. They said, we want the black robes to come and establish a school for us. So Chief Spotted Tail sent his children to Carlisle Indian School in Pennsylvania. And he went over there to check on them and here he didn't like the way the children were being treated. So he took his children out and brought them back. And that's when he requested a black, the black robes to establish a school here. So eventually Bishop Marty asked the Jesuits if they would come and establish a school, which they did. They, they set it up here and then about a year or a couple years later, they went to Pine Ridge and they established a school over there. And then Jesuits started coming and they started doing missionary work among the Lakota. So the church started growing from that point on. The school was established in 1886. Um, and Pine Ridge, I think, was established in 1889. And they sent Jesuits to teach here, Jesuit scholastics who were in training came and taught here and they asked the nuns, Franciscan nuns, if they would run the, uh, the girls program, school. So they came. So in addition to missionary work that was taking place out in the communities, you know, we sent our children here, they sent their children here to the schools to receive a good Christian education. So over the years, you know, from 1886, 89, 1900, 1910, 20, 30, you know, the, the church was growing on the reservation. And um, practically, at least according to some records, by about 1934, practically everybody on the reservation, every Lakota on the reservation was either a Catholic or an Episcopal or um, I think it's Congregationalist was the third denomination. And the majority of them were Catholics. And they were sending their children here to St. Francis. So the, the, the Catholic Church grew in both the community where the Jesuit priests were going and preaching among the community. And they started a St. Joseph St. Mary Society which helped the Lakota people themselves talk about the Catholic faith and teach each other about the Catholic faith. And they had catechists. The Jesuit priests identified catechists in practically every community that would, who would teach catechism to the young people so that they would be baptized and receive the sacraments. And uh, <clears throat> So the church was growing out in the communities as well as here in the school. Of course, the school was a Catholic school, so anybody who came to school here received a Catholic education. An excellent, excellent education. That lasted until, uh, or it was 1980. Between 1970 and 1980, the Jesuits turned the school over to the local parent board over a span of 10 years. So during that time, it was still a Catholic school until it was completely turned over. So that's, you know, just a quick history of our, you know, the growth of the Catholic Church here on the reservation, you know. And, you know, just because we're Catholics, you know, doesn't mean we're going to behave <laughs> like an, you know, what, people might think as an ordinary Catholic out there in, you know, among the white people. <laughs> okay. We do believe the Catholic faith and we, you know, we're growing in the faith, you know, <laughs> but our lifestyle is not going to change overnight. You know, that's, I think that's important to understand. You know, um, I just read a short article just recently that, uh, I don't rec recall the whole thing, but they said something about, you know, why did, do we have a great 
advancement in science in the West. And the person said, well, that's because we believed in one God. It's not happening anywhere else the same way that it happens in the West, you know, this growth of science. Because most other place, places, they believe that they're in more than one God, pantheism. Whereas we believe in one God, and that's what enables us to advance in science quickly in the West. Well, the point is, you know, we Lakotas, we only receive the Catholic, the, the good news 150 years ago. Okay. So we're absorbing the faith gradually as a people, as a society. It'll take us a while to get to the point where our lives will start changing and adjusting to what it is to live as Christ wants us to live. I don't know if I'm supposed to take questions. Maybe that's... <laughs> I think I'll finish my talk that way. <laughs> and again, I, invite, I welcome all of you folks to, uh, to, our, to our church, a humble church, you know. We're proud of it. Yeah, you have a chance to watch that. Thank you. Thank you.